I've been waiting for you to arrive. Mm. I'm just having this yum organic. To oh, that is so tasty. Mm. I shouldn't talk with my mouth full. But I know exactly who you are. Your gardeners, but not just any old gardeners. Your organic gardeners, just like me. And my name's Costa, and I'm here to help you along the road to organic gardening. And you know where it begins? It begins right here in the soil. Because when you grow good soil, that grows beautiful organic produce, which grows beautiful, healthy, organic people, just like you and me. Let's learn all about it and have some fun along the way. So, am I right? Are you ready to get your own organic garden growing out there? Hmm, I'll take that as a yes. Tell me, what time is it? Organic, organic gardening, gardening time! Now to show you what your garden could become, I'm down here in Melbourne with some of my buddies here in their garden. And believe it or not, this garden is only one year old and already it's supplying produce for the tuck shop. Now, they already are learning a lot about gardening, but you've got to remember that at the start, your garden isn't going to necessarily look like this one after a year. It might look a bit bare, it might look a bit desolate, but that's okay, because all you need is patience, and after a while, you'll have a garden that's thriving and a tuck shop that's pumping on fresh organic produce. So Jennifer, why did you go about starting such a great garden here in the school? Well, when um, I came here a couple of years ago, this was just really basically a weed patch. And we, uh, in the primary school, we teach the children about gardening and, and farming and, you know, looking after themselves and, and nutritionally and so on. And I knew we needed to have somewhere where we could actually get them, get their hands into the soil and, and uh, grow the grains and all of those sorts of things. And we set about actually getting the garden going so that we could get the children out here. That sounds like the bell. It does indeed. <laughs> I think it's time yeah. for the... We've got to get into class. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I'm going to get into the garden anyway. Okay, good on you. I can see you've got a big compost pile here. What have you learnt about composting? That you have to um, spray the water in rows, not um, just spraying it all over because that, it makes the compost better. Ah, okay. And why do you compost? So it makes the plants grow bigger and they make them um, healthier. And what ingredients go into a compost to turn uh, your garden into a better place? Worms and you can put cow manure. Yeah, what else? Hay. Hay, yeah. What, any other ingredients, Chloe? Mm. Um, scraps. Scraps, yeah? Yeah. And, and what happens to the, to, to the scraps and the worms and the, and the manure? It and disin disintegrates into little parts and then you put that into your um, veggie, patch, uh, veggie patch and it makes it into um, it makes the plants grow better. So it's good for the soil? Yep. Is compost scary? No. Does it smell nice? No. No. Uh-uh. Oh. So compost doesn't smell nice? No. no. You sure? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a smell. Smell that. Does it smell that bad? No, it doesn't, but it did when we first made it. Oh, it did when you first made it? Yeah. Oh, because of the cow manure, of course, yeah, but compost itself doesn't smell, does it? No. And it's good, it's food for the plants? Yeah. Cool, well thanks. Yeah. Thanks for telling me about that. Yeah. Happy growing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Top 
five simple, easy things to grow. Lettuces, literally two, three weeks, you're picking the outside leaves off and making a salad. No brainer. Basil, just keeps growing, literally the whole year round in most climates. Cucumbers, they just ramble. You put them in the ground and they just run. <laughs> you go, hey, come back. Definitely a winner. Pumpkins, again, you plant them on the edge of a, a paved area and just let them run over the top. They're really simple. You don't have to do much to them. Just give them some soil and, <laughs> and put the saddle on. <laughs> radish, radish is a really quick one. And you'd be surprised when you, when you start to grow radish, it really can play with, with kids' tastes and things. Because at first, it, if a radish is just put on a plate, like anything, they go, ah, what's this? But if they pull it out of the ground, give it a bit of a clean and a wash and then eat it, it might be this peppery thing, but they actually love it. To make your school garden a real success, you got to talk about it. You got to talk it up. You got to promote it. You got to put it right there in front of people and encourage them. Um, if you're going to make a school garden, don't hide it way down the back of the school. Start right smack in the centre, right at the front of the school, right where the kids are going to play. A lot of people think, oh yeah, but the garden shouldn't be there, that might get trodden on. No, if, if, if we want to make food and health the very core and centre of our lives, well, we have to put that in the core in the center of our day-to-day -day lives. So to make it successful, put it in the spotlight and talk it up, promote it, get people involved. And when you find people that are into it, celebrate their enthusiasm because it can't be carried only by one person. And, and probably the, the other thing you really want to consider when you're approaching a school garden is that it's not just about the produce. It's, it's not about making hundreds of kilos of food. What, what you're actually doing is growing the community. Now there's many pieces to the organic gardening puzzle. It's one thing to grow all this beautiful produce, but two pieces of the puzzle that I want to talk about are right here with me. Volunteers in the tuck shop because we don't just grow it to look at it. We grow it to Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> exactly. Now tell me, who are you? What are you doing here? And they look yum. Okay. All right. Well, we're two mums in the school. We have children in the school. And uh, a few years back, the canteen, uh, the woman that was running the canteen had to leave. And uh, we got sick of complaining about not having a canteen. So we thought, well, we'll start doing it. So that's how it sort of started. And um, a passion for cooking. Okay, being Italian, yeah. Um, and yeah, I guess that's passion for organic food. Yes, we wanted to be absolutely. organic. That was really yeah. the core of our our um, decision, and uh, so, and we wanted to create the funds to be able to create a garden. So we wanted the children to experience the garden, hands on, work in the garden, see it all grow, and then enjoy it for their lunch. And that's what yeah, we're doing. And like where it comes from. Yeah. But I mean, that, that's it. I mean, you wanted change. You're driving change, yeah, we did. and. You, you're creating that change in, in the real food that the kids eat. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Nature's been growing things for a long time. It knows about the seasons. And if you grow in season, the plants are happy in season. The seeds, seeds have everything they need to climb out of the ground and then connect to the sun and go, okay, this is my time. So when you grow stuff in season, it works. The other beauty is that something in season provides. It just provides so much. There's like a bounty of that season. And that's when we can then expand our whole garden experience to say, okay, it's now tomato time, let's make sauce so that we can capture the flavour, the colour, all of what summer and tomatoes is into a jar and have that 
over the colder winter months until the tomatoes come round again. And when we accept that it works in a circle, then we love things for what they are, when they are, and then you don't have them. So when they come back again, it's like, yes, it's berry time. I'm gonna eat stra my strawberries again, or mangoes, or tomatoes. So yeah, seasons, seasons are there for satisfaction. Enjoy the season and then farewell it. And when it comes around again, welcome it and then farewell it. Really organic is what everything should be <laughs> because that's how it always was. And I'd like to think that, that all of the work that we do is really to just create that as the one way. <laughs> can anyone do it? Yes, of course you can. Do you need to get hang-ups and bang-ups? No. Just think about what you put on the soil, just as we should be thinking about what we put in there every time. Read the label. And once you start doing that, you're going to change the way you look at the big picture of the world because you'll treat the soil as sacred because it creates the food that's sacred that goes into your body and if you see your body as sacred then you will make the effort and then you will get strict about certain things and say hey I don't want that in my body and I think that's the difference. <laughs>